Hello there. Uh, quite a few occasions I've been asked what tools do I use to test to see if the battery uh, is being charged by the charger. Uh, a lot of people think it's not charging, we'll buy a new battery charger, etc. But maybe the battery charger isn't at fault. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to test this scooter to see if the charger is charging the batteries and how to test to make sure to see if the charger is actually working or not. Now the tools I use, again, multimeter. You put it to DC voltage, which is here. That's alternating voltage you have in the house. Uh, AC voltage, and that's your DC voltage. That's what you need to test the system here. And of course, continuity if you've got a fault. But we don't have any faults today. We're finding out if it's charging um, to see if there's an issue. What I also use is a, a current clamp meter, a DC clamp meter, which is this tool here. Okay, I clamp that over a positive or negative ter terminal in the battery which is underneath the rear shroud and that will tell me how much current the charger is actually putting into the batteries and this will tell me how many voltage it, the charger is putting into the batteries. Sometimes you can get these combined with a, a voltmeter and a, a DC current tester as well. Let's switch that off now. What I also use, which you most likely will not have, is my battery tester here. So what I tend to do, I've got my charger in here. It's been through the wars, it's 10 years plus now this thing, but it still works fine. So I plug it in there, plug that into the scooter, and straight away when I plug that in, it will tell me if there's voltage here. So it's a voltmeter reading and an ammeter reading. And then I plug the charger in here, Power goes through here, tells me how many amps it's putting in and the voltage at the same time. And it also will test my charger. But of course, you most likely don't have this tool. This is an easy tool I use. Plug in, I know this power coming here. Now, the annoying thing is with this particular scooter, and it's very rare, that most scooters have a charger connection of the three pin with a three pin female. So the, the charger would then plug in here. Now, if you need these connections, let us know. We sell them. There'll be a link below somewhere uh, that you can click on it and check. All different connections for all different. Um, this is pre-wired for all different scooters. You can also have a plastic connector and also a metal one. This one has a wee clip in here. That when you push the charger connection in here, there we are, you've actually got to release the connection here. When you tighten the plastic ones up, don't over tighten them because if you over tighten it this close to the edge, you'll start breaking it, the edge bits here if you over tighten it. So just tighten, that's it, don't over tighten it. The annoying thing with this one is, I kind of test it with my, with my tester meter. Can't test, the reason of that being is, this is a charger. This is a 15 amp charger. 15 amp there's no need for this scooter to have a 15 amp, amp charger the batteries on this i think batteries are located here 12 volt 75 amp an hour batteries an 8 amp charger will do exactly the same job don't get me wrong 15 amps it will charge quicker but yet again is if you had to replace this charger well over 140 pounds because it's a 15 amp uh, and it's a specific connector now this is a strider scooter it's 10 years old so I don't think this one will still be available. So you'll have to do some modifications. So if it is faulty, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of these connections on it. Uh, rather than wiring all these up with new Anderson connectors, there's four connections here. You've got your positive, your negative, that one's not used, that's a blank. And the green ones inhibit. Inhibit means that when you plug it into charge, like you can't switch it on and drive it, it stops it from driving heavy duty cable this one has. So we need to check to make sure it's charging. Now what also a lot of people have said to me, this electrician comes along, let's see, let's pick a charger here. Good quality charger, microprocessor charger. And they think, oh, it's no charging because what they do is they stick the voltmeter in here, plug this into the mains, put the voltmeter, as I said, on here, put it onto DC voltage, very carefully put them on here 
and the reading that they get is zero. Most charges above three, four amp will not give a reading here, even if they're working. Very important, do not check it that way. The reason for that being is, is that charger and well, this charger, one of the new ones, uh, older ones are these ones here. Got a wee fan in it, keeps it cool when it's charging at high high current, let's say. This is a, I think it's a five amp. Ah, this is a five amp. So it needs to cool itself down. So there's a wee fan that switches itself on and off to shoot itself to cool it. These chargers will not work and and the program the specific way that they won't work until you've got a specific amount of voltage being put into the charger. Not what the charger's given out. So if you've no voltage here, or let's say eight volts, 10 volts, charger you can plug in, it won't work. So your, your sparky comes along, checks that, well, no power coming out, but you need a new charger. So many people have phoned up, new charger still won't charge. Problem is, you'll most likely have low voltage in the batteries. Now, another way to overcome that, the smaller two amp chargers for boot scooters, they will constantly put up power. They're designed completely different. Also have the three pin charger connection on it, but it will constantly put out what they're rated at. So if they're rated at two amp or 1.5 amp, this one's 1.8 amp max. If I plug that into the mains and put my terminal connections, DC voltage, that will put out voltage. That will put out 24 volts, 25, 26 volts. What is it rated at? It's rated at uh, input, output, 24 volts, but usually it'll be more than 24. It'll be about 25, 26 volts it'll put out uh, across there. So on the smaller battery chargers, if you plug your multimeter, DC, you will get voltage here. That's why you sometimes find when you got a small boot scooter, the batteries are blown up like a golf ball. As people keep the scooter in the shed, don't charge it over the winter. When they come back in springtime, they put it on charge, smell rotten eggs. Charger will still work, just because it's a two amp one or below, but the batteries are knackered. Therefore, they still take the current, but they get blown up. The batteries will overheat and then can be dangerous. You smell rotten eggs and then you open the battery box and the batteries are super glued together because of that warped and sometimes it's difficult to get out the battery boxes. So beware of that. There's no voltage coming out of here when you plug that into the mains. There's voltage coming out of here when you plug it into the mains. So a two amp to an eight amp are completely different. Now, so hopefully that was an insight. By the way, charging is very important. You don't just buy a charger win or nilly. You need to find out what kind of batteries you have. Most modern battery chargers, particularly this one, will charge bo both lead acid and gel batteries. We've got these in stock. Now there's a, a new upgraded version for this one, which is this one here. It's exactly the same, very light, 8 amp charger, microprocessed charger. It's hardwired, plastic this time. Manufacturer will make a little bit more profit by using plastic than metal. So things are moving on. Everybody just needs to make that little bit more profit. So, uh, where was I? Where was I? Type of battery, gel battery, lead acid. So these will do both. This particular one is for lithium batteries only. Small foldable lightweight boot scooters that you get when you go on holiday, easy to lift. The batteries are very light indeed. You hold it in the palm of your hand. Lithium batteries, lithium iron, lithium batteries only. They charge a different cycle, a different way altogether in these battery chargers. So this battery charger, lead acid battery charger. So with this one, you can only charge lead acid. That one will do both. So it's very important when you do buy a charger that you know what kind of batteries you have. Uh, this modern one here will charge both lead acid and gel. It will know exactly what you've got and it will charge it to that spec. So we also do in-car battery chargers for small foldable boot scooters. Still the three, uh, three pin connectors. DC to DC, put that in your cigarette lighter and it will charge your battery and you've also got a fuse. <laughs> That's one thing to check as well as there's a fuse on here. So if it's no charging, I would check this fuse and you check that with your continuity on your multi uh, multimeter here, the continuity. 
I mean, they'll they may have the power light coming on, but the fuse could be blown and it won't charge. So this, I don't really like them, but if you're doing a lot of traveling, going from A to B, you can't take the scooter into the hotel that you're going into or from uh, wherever you're going. You can plug that into your scooter, plug that in a cigarette lighter. Some cars have a connection at the back and it will charge your scooter. This is a 1.5 amp. It'll take a long time, uh, but yeah, you can use it in a car, no problem. We sell these as well, so available on our website. Now, put these chargers away. Now, as I said, this particular scooter has a funny connection. So we need to find out. Let's move this out of the way, get some room here. Right, this is a funny connection, so we need to test this charger. So the way, as I said, to test this charger, we've got to plug it in. But first of all, we need to find out if we've got voltage here. Okay, that is important. Now let me bring you a little bit closer so you can see the connection here. And so let's see what the dash says, because the dash says it's only got two lights on, so there's not a lot of power in it. And the customer has had that on charge overnight and still only two lights. So let me bring you a little bit closer so you can have a look. Now you've got a bird's eye view of the charger connection. Uh, you've got your negative, you've got your positive, and the green one's your inhibit, and that's your blank. The voltmeter is set to DC voltage, so all I do is put the connections in here to see what voltage we have. 23.57 volts. So 24 volts, 24.4 will be kind of flat, and 23.58 is flat. Okay, so we know we're getting voltage here, so when I plug the charger in, it should charge. I think this one here is about, so about 16 volts it will require. Approximately around that, some of the chargers may be different. This one's around about 16 volts it requires to get it kicked in to put some life into it. Uh, I'll show you the display. Switch it on. So your display shows only E for empty, so it's only two bars. So it's definitely not charging. So what we need to do is take the seat off and gain access to the batteries. Right here, we've got 275 amp hour batteries here. We've got a voltmeter. Set to DC voltage. Let's measure what the, the battery's given us. 11.5, 12.5. Now what we need to do is plug the charger on. So we plug the charger on here. The mains on. Actually, the, the light come on the charger, telling us uh, that we're connected 30%. Okay, but we still need to switch. Put it on the mains. Right. So that light's gone off. I can hear it's making noises inside here. The fan's running. So we want me to see about a voltage change. Back to the volt, uh, multimeter, negative, positive. There's no change. I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes for the charger to figure out what the script is. Definitely no change there. So what I can do, this is where I use my clamp meter. The clamp meter tells me how much 15 amp that particular charger is. Put it on DC, zero it, and then put it over one wire only, zero, nothing. So if I put it on the negative side, it will work exactly the same, but it will come with a minus. So it's no giving us any current in that charger. It's still on, nothing happening here whatsoever. This one is not fitted with a fuse, just check round about. So 15 amps. I put well over 140 pounds for this charger if you want that connection with it. 
So what do we need to do? <coughs> Charger's not working, we figured that one out. Let me give it a couple of minutes. Zero it. Zero. We're not putting anything in there, the fan's on. There's something wrong with the charger. Batteries are low. 11.4, 11.5, it's not putting anything in it whatsoever. So what we need to do is we know that the, the wiring from here to here to the charger connection is okay. We know that. Put a multimeter on it, we've got voltage so we know it's going there. We do know now that we've made this particular test with your, your clamp meter and your voltage that there's nothing coming out of this charger. Making lovely noises but nothing's happening. Nothing whatsoever. Okie doke, right, remove that. Now, 140 pounds a lot of money for a charger. What do people do? They want to buy the cheapest thing about. I would recommend for this size of batteries, anything above 50 amp, 50 amp and up, to get an 8 amp charger. Microprocess charger, very good charger these. Some people I've seen these selling for 140 pounds, we sell it for under 100 pounds. And, uh, very good chargers. So, if we use this charger, again, like I said to you before, we need to use this connection. We need to use the three pin connector now if we're using this charger. It's a cheaper charger, customers save 50 quid. And if, if it fails in the future, they just buy another one of these. We're gonna put this in its place. Now, big connection, this in here, you see it's quite a big, so I need to remove this and then solder one of these in its place. And then all we do is go all over again. It's as well, it's got three wires in here. You inhibit, which is the middle one. You positive, which one, this one is number two, number one, and negative is number three. So I need to make sure when I, <laughs> when I put these on, I put it on the right way around, otherwise you could be in trouble. As a matter of fact, what's gonna happen is it won't work because this charger, as I said to you before, requires a plus 16 volts for it to work. So if I make a mistake by wiring this thing correctly, you're not going to blow anything up, it's just that, it's not very professional. So we just need to make sure we do it right the first time. So, I need to unscrew this here now. I'll bring the camera a little bit closer for you so you can see what I'm doing here. Right, now that I've got the front body panel off, I can see your ignition. If you need one of them, we've got them in stock. Uh, that is your slow speed for when you go around corners. So we sensor there. A couple of micro switches in there. And that's your charger connection. Now, I actually quite like this connection. The reason is, let me pull that apart. I can try everything because I've got a charger connector. I think pre-wired. The one that I had here, and I need to make sure, ah, bugger, it's the wrong connector. Yeah, bugger. Uh, not to worry, not to worry. So because my connector is exactly the same as that side, I kind of plug it in, which is a pain, but it's just one of these things. So it looks like I have to do a little bit more work. I do these clips here. There's your charger connection here, so I don't need that there now. Right, now I've cut and soldered and heat shrinked the wires onto the terminals. So all we need to do is plug her in and just check to make sure everything's okay. Now this is where I can use my, my tester. Right, now that I've plugged my Charger tester and battery tester onto the new charging socket that I put on. I'll just grab the nearest charger. Uh, oops, plug it in. Put some mains on. Power lights coming on. Charging lights coming on. Voltage rises, current rises. This is an 8 amp charger. Sufficient to charge these 75 amp hour batteries up. Now because it's empty, these batteries have been emptied due to 
the charger failure and the scooter's been used and used and used, they're flat as a pancake. So, it'll put just about the highest current available in, and as it charges, it'll make its way down from about 7.8, 7 7.9 amps, away down to zero. Once it's at zero, that particular charger you can leave on all the time, it's a microprocessor charger, it will decide how much current to put into the batteries and to charge them as and when required. So that charger will actually monitor the batteries as well as, so you can keep it connected up. So really, that's it repaired. Customer's got a new charger. You'll not get this one because that's my tester. Uh, you'll get another charger, most likely the new plastic version, because uh, these ones, Invercare, don't issue these ones anymore. Other companies do. Can be quite expensive. Uh, the ones, the replacement ones are under £100 for the 8 amp microprocessor charger. I wouldn't have put a 5 amp charger on this because it'll take donkeys to charge these batteries. Minimum charging time on batteries for anybody that needs to charge a battery is minimum 8 hours. You use the scooter through the day, you charge it through the night. Plug it in when you come back in the afternoon and charge it right away through to the following day. And then you can switch it off. But if you've got one of these chargers or the new one, you can leave it on all the time. Once it's at zero, it'll put it on the trickle charge to prolong the life of the batteries. And then if you don't use it in a week or two, it'll maybe charge a little bit more and then it'll come back down again. So I think that's the only thing I have to do now is really drill a hole and put the charger connection in it. But uh, I think anybody can drill a hole. You don't need to see that. The main aim of the game is charging on the batteries, checking to see what's wrong with it. So we hope this was informative to you about batteries, charger, etc. So if you'd like to leave a comment below and uh, I'll try and answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.